Today you guys are going to witness the final game ever of Triple Door and Scion. This was my pocket pick into Akali. I never really showed this to you, however if you were watching the League of Tilt videos you would have seen this build in the highlights. I've recently found a new tool to help me gain elo and I feel like it's something that you guys can take advantage of as well. I'm using this app to figure out my best and worst matchups in the top lane right. Once I know the best and worst I can simply avoid taking Scion into these matchups and overall I'm going to gain much more ELO. This app that I'm using is called Mobilytics. After it's been installed, once you jump in game, you're gonna have a bunch of useful overlays that compare how you're performing in game to other people in your ELO. It's gonna teach you what areas you excel at, what areas you may be underperforming in. What's actually unique to the Mobilytics overlay app though, gives you live information on how much gold you need before each of your backs. For example, how much gold I need until I can purchase the Barmy Cinder on my first back. There's also a live tool that allows allows you to know when the enemy has hit a power spike, like Galio getting level 6 here. My favourite feature is still what I mentioned, that is the matchup pool provided by Mobilytics. It tells me exactly who to avoid when I play a certain playstyle. If you want to check out your stats, feel free to download the Mobilytics app. It is in the description of this video. I highly recommend it. And yes, it is completely free, so check it out. It's a very grim day. This was played right before the OCE service went down. So this is the final possible time I could have played this. The Triple Doran Scion Strat. Very unlikely you've ever seen it before and now officially the last time you'll ever see it. The goal behind it is to completely bully the Akali. It is 100% a pocket pick. I only ever play this into Akali. I don't think it's very efficient into anybody else. Stacking three Doran rings she doesn't get a chance to burst you down. You're too tank, you have too much mana regen, and too much burst. We max our W. The way Akali works is she abuses her shroud, right? She pokes in and out of it and chunks down her enemies. The problem is when we're running Comet, we're running all of these tanky stats, she can't get us low enough, and we can damage her in her shroud no matter what because we have our W, we have our Q. So all our abilities still damage her, it's just a matter of being consistent enough to be able to put out that damage output, which the Doran rings give us, they give us an unlimited mana pool. This part right here is a bit of a mistake. We got the first blood from the jungle gank, but the wave did not crash into the tower quick enough, allowing Akali to come back and potentially freeze it. I attempt to forcefully push the wave in, even if it means suicide. Not the biggest issue in the world, as long as the wave isn't frozen, it's worth the death overall. And ultimately, we still have a perfect back for what we're trying to achieve, which is the triple Doran start. There is nothing stronger in this matchup. And because of the way that wave bouncing works in the top lane, because it was slow pushing towards him on our death, on return, we come back to a fully stacked wave, and Scion, unlike Akali, has the ability to tank this wave and perma-freeze it. And now, with the Comet and the Scorch, we are practically just playing bowling. It's just a matter of time until we chunk this Akali down. As hard as she tries to hide in the Shroud, all of our abilities, they're just AoE. We're going to hit her. It doesn't really matter. For those of you who are unaware, Scion scales with ability power on both his W and his E. So his shield and when we launch the minions. The live tracker that just popped up, that is a feature of Mobilytics. It doesn't seem useful in this situation because you obviously know when you get level 6, but it does help when you're not looking around the map. For example, if you have a Malphite in the mid lane and you see that he gets level 6, if you're a jungler, you could easily take advantage of that. Akali gets absolutely womboed by the Scion Ultimate. In some world, all these Akalis think that once they're in the Shroud, they're invincible. And that's what this build tries to deny. They think they're safe in the Shroud, but realistically every ability I have is hitting them, plus the Scorch is hitting them, and they can't get through our shield. So there's no out for them really. Well, I mean, obviously, if a jungler comes, that is an out as well. 
I'm sure some of you have noticed the item that I am building towards, the Demonic Embrace. Realistically, we're just trying to stack right on top of the Scorch, right? We want her to be consistently getting burnt. And the next item I intend on going for is the Sunfire. So we're trying to get them to work together and just burn her out under her shroud. Whatever she does, we're going to be there to screw her over once she's in it. You'll notice because of our W's range, she can't even farm. If she wants to come in farm range, we're gonna be able to poke her out and look at the insane damage that the W does now that we have some AP. It is a nasty, nasty stuff, this matchup. Obviously, it's not the most optimal build for a team fight, but if you're in a situation where you have to beat this Akali and you don't want her snowballing, I mean, this is the way to do it. Oh, I mean, this was the way to do it. By the way, when I said it's not optimal in a team fight, I didn't mean it couldn't do it. It's okay. The problem is if the enemy ADC gets too fed and you don't have enough armor, then you're in a lot of trouble. But in games where he's not super fed, you're probably going to be perfectly fine. You're still extremely tanky. You have the Sunfire Cape and you have a lot of burn damage. This game, I decided to go Leandri's third. Honestly, you could just go stock standard heart steal. You could go any standard item you want as third. The point of this build is to bully and control Akali during the laning phase. After that, it's really up to you the way you want to go. For me, I was having fun with the idea of burning her out, so Leandri's made sense. As the top laner, I am sitting on an abundance of gold. I have five kills, four assists. We are very far ahead, and usually you might look to group and utilize that gold. The problem is with this build, I'm not 100% confident that we can win that team fight. I don't want to risk it. So it makes more sense to me to stay in the bot lane and force the enemy to come to me. That way my team can have an advantage. Hopefully a 3v4 or even the 4v4, I think they could win. Ultimately, I just don't want to risk losing the game, so it's smarter to stay in the bot lane. Our auto attacks deal a lot of damage with the AP. You'd be surprised. You can still split push and you can 1v1 anyone. Your shield's too big. I also I think this build could still work even though they got rid of the triple Doran although I do think it's probably gonna be less of a guarantee because the thing about Doran ring stack was it's kind of a waste of gold although it does guarantee you the lane right so you're really like winning that laning phase and hopefully pushing that lead through till the end which for this Akali matchup that's really good overall though it is quite a flexible build the Demonic Embrace item on Scion is quite strong. You could just start that, win the lane, and then transition into a completely stock standard build. What I'm curious about is to see if any of you guys have your own pocket pick build into specific matchups on Scion. I have a few of them where I build a certain way, play a certain way, and it always works out. Sometimes, like, stupid shit just works, and... It's really hard to explain why. Also, don't forget if you guys are not yet using a map timer overlay or you want to check out what your worst and best matchups are in terms of LP gains, download Mobile Edit in the description below. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.